agencies also arise with the democracy in the company. Right? So democracy operates with majority rule. And that means that the minorities have to do what the majority decides, right? So essentially, whoever is in the minority on a given vote has agreed to delegate power to the majority to do what they think is right and what they voted for. That's part of the game of democracy, that when you're in the minority, you go along and then you work for the changing of policies through a majority vote uh, that you agree with. Right? Um, so the law delegates power to the majority, and we have this agency problem between minority and majority. Um, the action in group will present a problem if we have a dominant shareholder, like in Hong Kong, we often have families that are very powerful, like the Lee family in Chong Kong and Hutchinson. And the uh, a group of related persons as well. Um, there are a number of Spanish financial investors in Bank of East Asia, and they may be enough together if they decide to group up together to control and dominate Bank of East Asia. So we can have either coalitions or single dominant members. And we even in a case where there is no dominant single member or single group, it's possible to have a, um, uh, a difficult arrangement when the smallest members in a group of 1,000 or thousands of members simply do not care to vote. They don't talk to each other. It's expensive for them to be organized. And they also receive very little benefit because if they have, if they have one one hundredth of a percent of the company, if they worked very hard to change the policies of the company, the resulting profit to them would be one one hundredth of a percent of the profit, which is not terribly significant. So we end up with rationally apathetic members. Right? They have very little incentive to act. Right? That can lead to oppression. So the dominant members will act in some cases contrary to the interests of the minority members, right? and the law works to prevent this sort of oppression. We have, uh, in particular, an action for remedying unfairly prejudicial conduct. And we'll look at that at the uh, week 12 of this course. The last agency problem is the problem of creditors and members. So a creditor, a bank, or someone that buys a bond or a debenture of the company will lend money to the company, but does not receive voting rights from the company. The members have the voting rights. So the members will have power indirectly, given that they elect directors, over how the money is spent. But the money essentially belongs to the creditors who are hoping to get it back with interest. So the happy creditor will be the creditor of a company which protects its capital and is conservative, pays its interest, and continues along in a stable, steady way. Now, members are not contract holders. Members are property holders. So a member's return on the company has no limit. If a creditor lend, lends money at 10%, then the creditor will only receive repayment plus 10% interest for the period. However, a member who invests in a company that then becomes wildly successful, 
could receive 1,000%, 10,000% on return on that company. And that is a very large possible return. However, if the company were to go bankrupt, the member has no, no claim on any return from the company. The creditor, on the other hand, has a claim to receive the agreed amount plus interest. So you see how members are risk happy. They want to take chances and maybe the company will strike it rich. Maybe it will go bankrupt, but limited liability ensures that they will not uh, have to pay for the bankrupt amount out of their own personal assets. And this is a dilemma for the creditors. This is the third agency problem, right? So we have the risk happy member and the creditor who is happy when capital is high and the company is stable, but the creditor is unhappy when the members use the capital for risky ventures that are unsuccessful. And uh, the creditor would have received very little benefit from this risky venture. The members would have received benefit if the risky venture had succeeded. So you see the, the problem that comes from the sad creditor who has a contractual right to repayment plus interest and the member which owns property. And this is one of the few places in your study of law where you will see a stark comparison between property and contract and how they play out in relationship to each other. In the financial industry, and Hong Kong is a financial center, the distinction between property and contract is extremely important. And most people want property if they can. So sometimes you'll see credit, you'll, the credit position being structured as property, and sometimes you'll see a property position made to look like credit in order to receive the benefits of the two with the ultimate ownership right of property. This is a very interesting problem. For our purposes, we'll be limited to looking at controls that try to keep the share capital of the company high. So the share capital of the company will remain sufficient to protect the unsecured creditors from the failure of the company. And that's done primarily by stopping the members from giving themselves money from the company in the form of dividends or using the company's money to buy their own shares. And we will not look at charges, uh, which are a form of mortgage. And that's something that you will learn about in commercial law. So let's look at the course. The assessment in this course I have diversified. When people invest their savings or they look at a task that will be very important for them to succeed in, they normally want a diversified portfolio or a diversified assortment of tasks. So they don't put all of their eggs in one basket and they reduce their risk. And that's what I've tried to do for you. So the assessment will be in three parts. I will, first of all, put some quizzes in Open Ed X, and these will be multiple choice, and they will be given to you each, not each week, every other week. And that will be 15% of your grade. You'll assign an agreement in the first week of class that all of these quizzes will be your independent work and that you will not consult anyone 
And if it comes out that someone has consulted anyone else with regard to answering the quizzes, then that will be considered academic dishonesty, dishonesty for that component of the course, at least. Then, in class, we'll be working through a particular problem each week, which will be a law application problem. And you'll be doing this in teams, and you'll be receiving a team mark. That's 20% of your final mark. That leaves us with 65% of the final mark for a relatively brief final examination. This will reduce your stress during exam week. Some of you will have a class on the last Wednesday, no, I'm sorry, the last Friday of November, and then we have an exam in the first week of December, the 5th of December. So the um, exam will be lower pressure, given that it's only 65% of your final mark. It will be open book, restricted to your company's ordinance and notes. The company's ordinance is uh, available for purchase at the reception counter of the GLC. It normally costs less than 100 Hong Kong dollars. I'm not sure what the price of the copy will be this year. Uh, you may only use that particular copy of the company's ordinance and no other copy. So the multiple choice quizzes will be posted on open edX. They'll be brief. They'll be factual. I mean, they're multiple choice. So the answers will be clear and the answers will come from the lectures. There will be no quiz for this introductory lecture, but there will be for the next lecture on establishing the company and writing the articles of association. You will, as I said, have to sign a declaration because obviously you'll be doing these quizzes remotely and I will have no control over the, uh, the environment. And so uh, for the sake of fairness, you'll have to sign a declaration that the quizzes are your independent work. You may, of course, consult a lecture on the quizzes because the lecture is designed uh, to answer the quiz. Right? So that's 15% of total mark. I'll declare the quizzes right after the closing of the course. So as the course closes, you will know your quiz mark and you'll know where you stand on that 15% approaching the final exam. And then we'll have the teamwork in class on the application of law problems, tutorials. And these application of law problems will be designed to allow you to apply the law that you learn in each of the lectures to particular fact patterns. And you'll do this in teams. I have um, worked out the application of law problems so they apply to a, uh, a single group of people who uh, meet when they're students at CUHK. Uh, they establish a company. They seek legal advice. The lawyer uh, stays their lawyer and they experience problems and challenges as the company grows throughout its life and each of these stages of our course weeks of our course will be problems and challenges that the company is facing because some people will present their 
application of law answers early on, and they, they, that will be actually probably some of the easier questions early on. Uh, you will have an opportunity in later weeks to do added value comments after others, present answers to an application of law problem in class, and you will be able to present um, added value in order to potentially increase the grade that you have already received early on. And this gives you an incentive to answer the application of law problems early in the course and also allows you not to be penalized by doing so without the advantage of watching others present their answers prior to you. That was the course, and that was the nature of company law. Uh, we will talk about this throughout the entire course. They come back to here, your assessment. Throughout the entire course, and we will look at each individual item that I gave you at the beginning of this lecture. Uh, in sufficient detail, and you will have uh, quizzes on the odd weeks of the course, and you will have um, each week a basic um, application of law problem. Your application of law problem for this week is posted, uh, marked as such, problem number one, and it's posted to open at X and uh, please do then work through that and we'll be spending time in our first meeting during the first week of September uh, looking at this problem, working out solutions and uh, responding to the needs of the, own, the entrepreneurs and uh, providing the law in connection with the challenges of the business association requirements that they face. So I look forward to seeing you in class. Um, please take notes on this lecture. I'm very happy to answer any questions in class and also by email. I'll set up a discussion forum in Open uh, edX and uh, that will be available and visible to everyone in the course. So we'll have a chance to uh, discuss this lecture in uh, our meetings in the GLC. Uh, we will focus most of our time in, in those meetings on the application of law questions, which will allow you to understand the contents of this lecture in application. And then uh, for later questions uh, or for questions that you prefer to deliver in writing, we'll have the open forum and that will be available from the first week through the exam. And so that could be uh, uh, something that you want to consult, especially as content builds up during the course. So I look forward to seeing you in the first week of September.